This is part 74 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to implement an accordion panel in an ASP.NET Web Forms application using jQuery. First, let's understand what is an accordion. Accordion is great for displaying collapsible content panels for presenting information in a limited amount of space. So here we have an example. So we have some data like this, header 1 and it has got some content like content panel 1. Similarly, header 2 has got some data and header 3 has got some data. Now if we are not using accordion, then on a web page, this is how it will be present. But if we use accordion, look at that, we have this header 1 panel expanded. So we see the content associated with header 1. Now when I click on header 2, you know, the content panel of header 1 will be hidden and the content panel of header 2 becomes visible. So this accordion is great for displaying collapsible content panels for presenting information in a limited amount of space. Now, to produce this accordion, we just need you know these two simple steps. The first is the HTML for the accordion panel. So here notice that we have a div element. So this is called the container div. So this is the accordion container. And notice that at the moment we have given it an ID of accordion. You can give it any meaningful ID that you want. And for the purpose of this demo I have set the width of this accordion to 400 pixels. And what we have inside this accordion container is pairs of headers and content panels. So we have a header, H3, header 1, and associated to that is a content panel present inside the div element. Okay? So similarly we have another header and another div element and another header and another div element. So that's the HTML. And as far as jQuery code is concerned, we just need one line. So find the container in our accordion. So here the container accordion is this development with ID accordion. So find that development and then call the accordion function on it. That's all there to it. And this HTML and this jQuery code is going to produce this accordion panel. So I have this exact HTML and this jQuery code already typed here. So within our jQuery ready function, we are calling the accordion function on this container div. Okay. And here the HTML is the same as what we have seen on the slide and when we run this, notice that we have got an accordion panel here. At the moment header 1 content is visible. When I click on header 2, look at that, you know, header 2 content becomes visible and header 1 content is hidden. Okay, so here you know, the content is actually present at design time, right? But in most of the real-time applications, the data will be present in a database table. So basically what we want to do is retrieve data from a database table and then display that in an accordion, in an ASP.NET Web Forms application. So let's see how to achieve this. So when we click on the country name, so country name here is going to become the header in the accordion and the country description will be the content panel. So when I click on a country name, we want to display the country description. All right. So let's see how to achieve this. The first step here is to create this database table and populate it, which I have already done. And here is the SQL script to create and populate it with test data. I've already executed the script. The next step is to create a stored procedure, which is going to retrieve the data from that table. And the stored procedure is straightforward. All we have is a select query. So when we execute this, we should get the data from that TBL countries table. All right, now let's flip to Visual Studio. So the first step here is to add a connection string to our database, which I have already done. So this connection string is pointing to our sample DB. The next step is to add a class file to this project. And I'm going to call this country. And this class is going to have three properties, ID, name, and country description. So these three properties correspond to the columns in the database table TBL countries. Okay, all of them are auto-implemented properties. The next step is to add an ASP.NET web service to this project. So let's go ahead and add that. So we want to add an ASMX web service and let's call this country service. And we want to write some ADO.NET code here to retrieve data from the database table. So we need system.data. We need system.data 
data.sql client and we need system.configuration and we want this function you know to be called from script so I'm going to uncomment this attribute and let's go ahead and change the name of this function let's call this get countries and this function is actually going to return list of country objects okay and here we're going to write some adio.net code to retrieve data from the database table in the interest of time I have already typed the required adio.net code so let's go ahead and copy that from this notepad and paste it here okay so what are we doing here we are creating a list of country object here and we are reading the connection string from a web.config file creating a SQL connection object using that connection string and then we are creating a SQL command object we want this command object to execute the stored procedure sp get countries which is going to return all of the um, countries from the database table since it's a stored procedure we have to tell that to the command object then we are opening the connection we are executing the command we are looping through each row and populating the ID name and country description properties of the country object and adding that country object to the list that we have created here and after we have done looping through each row we are returning the list so that's our web service so let's go ahead and build the solution and test our web service So this web service should return the list of all countries. So when we click on get countries and when we click on invoke, look at that, we get all countries, you know, the country ID name and description. All right. Now let's go ahead and call this web service from our web form. So on this web form one dot ASPX, I'm going to remove all of this, you know, static content from here. So at the moment, I only have the container div so we have given it an ID of accordion and let's set the width of this to 600 pixels and within our jQuery ready function I am going to issue an Ajax call so dollar dot Ajax and let's configure our Ajax request so the URL that we want to call is country service dot ASMX and this service has got a function and the name of the function is get country so that's what we want to call so that's the URL to which we want to issue a request we want to issue a post request so I'm going to specify the method as post and we want to send JSON string to the server so I'm going to specify content type as application for slash JSON and let's also specify the care set equals UTF-8 and the type of data that we are expecting back from the server is going to be JSON and when the request successfully completes we want to associate a callback function so this function is going to receive the data that the web service is going to return okay so what is web service going to return the web service is going to return the list of all countries you know country objects and that country object has got ID name and country description properties now we want to loop through each of the country that the JSON object contains so I'm actually going to use the jQuery each function here before that I'm going to create a variable let's call this um, HTML string and I'm going to initialize that to an empty string and then let's go ahead and wrap the data object that we are receiving into this function and to access the data we have to use this D property right so that's what is going to contain the data that the web service returns and on that I'm going to use the jQuery each function and to this function let's specify the index and the country itself that we are currently looping through okay so what I'm going to do here is create the HTML string dynamically so what should an accordion contain the accordion should contain you know the header 
and content panel element. So in our example, we were using the H3 element, you know, to specify the header and a div element to specify a content panel. So I'm going to build those H3 elements and div elements dynamically as we are looping through each country. So HTML string plus equals, I want to create an H3 element and to that we want to append the name of the country so we have the country object here so country dot name is the property and let's close the h3 element and we want to open a div element and to that we want to append country dot and what is the name of the country description property so the property itself is country description. So let's copy that to avoid any typos. And finally, what do we want to do? We want to close that div element. All right. So as we loop through each country, what are we going to get? We're going to get pairs of H3 and div elements. And what do we want to do with this HTML string? You know, we want to set that as the inner HTML for this container div, right? And to do that, I'm going to find this div element by ID. So the ID of the div element is accordion. Actually, we already have that here. So I'm going to move this line into the success function, into the success callback function. So now before we call the accordion function, on this I'm going to call the HTML function and pass the HTML string to it. Okay, so this string, we are passing it to the HTML function. And on that, I'm going to call the accordion function. So what is this going to do? So, you know, when we call the HTML function, it's going to add all these pairs of H3 and div elements, you know, as child elements for this container div. And on that, we are calling the accordion function. So we should get, you know, this accordion panel. Let's see if that works. So let's go ahead and save the changes. Let's run the page. And look at this we get. Now we have India and at the moment we are seeing India content. When I click on United States, look at that, we get United States. Similarly, United Kingdom and Canada. Now so here is the web service code that we have written and here is the HTML and jQuery code. Now, this accordion widget has got a lot of options, methods, and events to customize it, you know, according to your requirement. For the complete list, please visit this URL. I found these two particular options very useful. This collapsible, so what is this option? Now, by default, at least one section need to be active. If you want to collapse all the sections, including the one that is active, then set this option to true. So if you notice here, look at this, when we load this page, look at that, the first panel is active, right? When I click on this again, look at that, it doesn't become invisible. I cannot collapse that, okay? But when I click on the other panel, which is not active, you know, that becomes active and it closes the other one. But then if I click on that again, you know, it doesn't close. So at any given point in time, at least one panel need to be active. If you want to close that as well, in the sense, if you want all these panels to be, you know, inactive in the sense closed, then you can use this collapsible option set that to true. So how do we specify the options? Use a JavaScript object like this, just like, you know, Ajax function, and then we can specify our options. So collapsible, and let's set that to true. Okay, so let's save the changes. Let's go ahead and reload this page. And look at this, now when I click on India, it gets collapsed, okay? So that's the use of that option. Active. Now, this option is interesting. This option can be set to either a Boolean value or an integer. So you can set it to either true or false, or you can assign integers like 0, 1, and 2. So if you set it to false, what is this going to do? It's going to collapse all panels. Now, let me explain what I mean. Look at this. When the form initially loads, you know, the first panel, you know, is active by default. Now let's say our requirement is such that when the page loads, we want all the panels to be collapsed by default. If that's what, what you want, then set this 
active option to false. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to set active to false. Let's save the changes. Let's reload this page and look at this. On the initial load, everything is collapsed. Right? You can also set it to an integer. So what is it going to do? That integer value will make the corresponding panel active. But the important thing to keep in mind here is that panels use zero-based index. So you know, first panel will have an index of zero, second one will have an index of one. So it's zero index based. So if you want, for example, let's say the second panel to be active, then you will have to set it to one. Okay, so let's save the changes. Let's go ahead and reload this. And look at this, United States is active. Thank you for listening and have a great day.